What's up, crew? Dennis here from Tran Athletic, and I've got some really, really interesting topics to review with you guys today. Uh, but first, before I get into that, I'm thinking about my opener there and uh, going by Tran Athletic. Tran Athletic is the gym that I own and train out of, and you know, since its inception, we've had other programs in there. Um, other sort of entrepreneurs, businesses. We got Strength Guild in there. We've had some others in the past. So Tran Athletic has become kind of a, a location more than a program itself. Of course, we had CrossFit prepared in there, um, but we're not affiliated with CrossFit, at least not at the moment. Um, but for the purpose of this YouTube channel and you know some of my online clients who essentially I'm just personal training, personally training, Thinking about just opening uh, these talks up with uh, Dennis from Train with Dennis. I don't know. What do you guys think about the name Train with Dennis? That's pretty simple. It's still Train Athletic, but it's just Train with Dennis. Anyhow, just rambling, just rambling. You guys know me. Uh, <laughs> I'm by no means a professional YouTuber. This is just me sitting in front of my camera phone talking to you all because I think this stuff is important. So today I want to talk more about this idea of nutrition for brain health, for mental health. And I recently finished up a lecture from Maggie Moons. I'm doing this certificate through uh, Idea Health and Fitness. It's about nutrition and mental health and behavioral change. And Maggie Moons gave this lecture um, about nutrition and its connection to depression and brain health. She's the author of The Mind Diet, uh, The Telomere Diet and Cookbook, and some other articles. Um, and so she's the one, you know, this basically this basic summary of what she said is that the Mediterranean diet is kind of the easiest template to follow if you're looking to improve, you know, you know support good mental health through nutrition. And so now it's a good time for me to give my disclaimer. You know, this is just for education purposes only. I'm just re reading you the literature, uh, sharing some of my feelings and opinions. Uh, this is not medical advice. Obviously, if you're suffering from clinical depression or anxiety, talk to an actual, oh, dang it, my phone. <laughs> talk to a doctor, talk to a certified professional. Um, but, you know, I think this is really compelling. And so, you know, that's a summary, the very, very short summary of her presentation is Mediterranean diet is pretty dope. And the kind of the why behind that is, comes, is kind of twofold. Uh, my opinion anyway of what she was saying is that, you know, there's two sort of essential nutrients that are lacking in the standard American diet. I guess it's kind of basic to call them nutrients, but um, omega-3 fatty acids, so EPA, DHA, which are pretty much from fish, and antioxidants. So antioxidants not per se a nutrient, it's a class of you know, phytonutrients and um, vitamins, you know, sorry. So I'm already looking up at, at my screen here. Um, so like ACEs, vitamin A, C, E, and uh, selenium are antioxidants. We have glutathione, um, and it's a bunch of precursors like N-acetylcysteine, and then you've got all the sort of like resveratrol from wine and grapes and, and all these sort of phytonutrients that have antioxidant capacity in the body, the free radical scavenging. Um, effects in the body. So anyway, that part, you know, the science, whatever, the biochemistry of the science is important. Uh, what was important from what she was saying is that almost universally our need for antioxidants um, is not met, especially in the brain, is not met through our diet. You know, our our usage of them outpaces our intake of them in our diet. So our brain, um, well, it's very active and 
very susceptible to oxidative stress. And so we need a lot of antioxidants in our diet to support healthy brain function. So this got me looking at a really cool article from the World Journal of Psychiatry. And it's titled Antidepressive Foods, an Evidence-Based Nutrient Profiling System for Depression. And so the reason I came upon this article, you know, uh, Maggie Moon, she was talking about this antidepressant nutrient scale or the antidepressant food score. And so it's a, a scale that um, rates foods for nutrient density that are supposed to benefit brain health, um, mood, and I mean, really, I guess, depression because they're calling it the antidepressant. And so, that, I mean, they've looked at, they've isolated 12 nutrients that are clinically significant when it comes to addressing depression, um, and depressive disorders. So those nutrients are folate, iron, long chain, omega-3 fatty acids, like I said, EPA, DHA, come from fish, cod liver oil, that type of thing. Magnesium, potassium, selenium, thiamine, vitamin A, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, vitamin C, and zinc. And so those are the 12 nutrients that are evaluated when evaluating a food for its antidepressant qualities. Um, and so what they do is they rate a food on its density in those 12 nutrients. And the more of those 12 it has, the higher a rating it gets on the antidepressant food score. Um, and so I found this very interesting. And so really, it, it's really usable. Um, again, this is just, this isn't a prescription. This is just something that you can know about. Um, and obviously it'd be very useful. And, and we could talk about this just normal healthy like again we don't have to necessarily address depression all of us are it's all a scale um it it's all spectrum we can all stand to improve our brain health and our our mood so what you know if you're getting your blood tested you know, it would be good to know about some nutrient deficiencies um, and these are some nutrients that maybe you could ask about, you know, um, talk to your doctor and say like, you know, how do I look in folate, iron, uh, omega-3s, magnesium, potassium, selenium, thiamine, A, and so on. Um, and so you guys can look that scale up yourself. But I just want to go through a couple key points that I saw in this article that really stood out to me. Um, so first, let's just talk about the highest rated foods. So you have um, two tables, you have the animal foods and the plant foods. And a really important point in reviewing this paper is to notice that the scores are given based on a 100 gram serving for each food thing. So the what I'm seeing at a glance, the highest rated food looks like watercress. Um, it's rated at a, a range of 127%. So, I mean, it somehow exceeds 100%. Um, I literally looked at this article 10 minutes ago. And I was just like, this is cool. I want to get on here and talk about it. Um, so just at a glance, it looks like watercress, but here's what you gotta consider. I'm looking at this a little like, I mean, realistically, are we gonna eat 100 grams of watercress every day? Probably not, but it's certainly good to know. It's something that we can very easily add to our salads, which by the way, spinach is at 97%. Um, lettuces, red, green, uh, you know, romaine's pretty high, up, up to 99%, Swiss chard, 90%. Um, and so these are things, I'm, sh I'm constantly sharing these photos of my meals with you guys. Uh, that's, that is for my active clients. Um, if you're just kind of viewing this on YouTube, hit me up, I'll send, I'll send you some of these photos. We've been doing, we've been doing photo journaling, um, myself and my clients. 
um, and that's really useful. And so the plate that I've been taking a picture of the most kind of reinforce with everybody, it, it's typically been a salmon filet, um, half a plate of super, we call them the, the super greens. They're uh, uh, organic girl super greens, but it's like spinach. Uh, I think it's Swiss, it was Swiss chard, um, tat soy, you know, it was an assortment of, you know, green, green leafy things. Um, olive oil, and that was big. She talked about olive oil. It's not listed on here. Um, and so on, and so here's what I want to throw out. Here is one of the top rated ones for the animal foods is oyster. And, and some of you, so my clients will have noticed I've been doing oysters again as an addition to my salad. So I've got the salmon filet. That's the, you know, the, the bulk, the lion's share of my animal protein for that meal. But I'm adding in oysters and now I'm getting some of that micronutrient density, those 12 nutrients that we're talking about that add to brain and mental health. And so that's what I want you to consider is like, don't look at this table and be like, okay, well, you know, this, like I've got to just reinvent my diet to be all watercress and oysters. No, um, just consider like those are great additions, but, and then, and then think about how we could do that in a kind of a normal, normalized way. We talk about like the healthy meal wheel or the balanced meals, like, you know, a palm sized portion of protein on your plate Half your plate is you know green things. By the way, uh, bell peppers, um, jalapeno peppers. They all made this list for the antidepressant foods. Um, great on a salad. Um, you know, maybe on your plate will be a little bit of nuts, like a handful of almonds or walnuts are really great for omega threes, and. Um, a little bit of oil, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, and I really love berries, blueberries. So the berries did not, oh, I like all berries. I love blueberries, but you know, um, raspberry, blackberry, you name it, they're all great. Um, they did not make this list, however, but uh, Maggie Moons did really emphasize, again, the need for antioxidants. And so I think berries are a great addition and they really satisfy that sweet tooth um, and for a lot of people that can curb that kind of sugar craving and, and they're hydrating and they're just good, refreshing, especially it's summertime now. Frozen, they stay really well frozen. They don't get a lot of mold. Um, I love it, way better than like ice cream or whatever. So on the uh, animal food side, things that stood out, oysters, I thought that was cool. Liver and organ meats. You know, people have heard me talk about this. This is kind of the thing in the carnivore world. Um, meat is, animals are a source of micronutrients. We tend to just think about them as protein. And like, let's just get the lowest fat ones so we just get our protein. Um, but that's a whole conversation in and of itself. I believe that especially if you're eating organic, you know, pasture-raised meats, that the fat is really good for you. Yes, it's saturated, but it's, I believe it's really good for you. Um, and, but if we're getting the organ meats, they're actually very micronutrient dense, high in all those, obviously in all those 12 micronutrients that now we're seeing are not only just important because I was always emphasizing kind of like immune health and that type of thing, but for brain health and for mood support and really it all, we're talking about training, you know, I'm mostly training focused, you know, helping people lose fat, improve their body composition, improve their performance in the gym and in life. Well, we've got to address your mood and your, your brain health first, because it all starts with decisions, right? And if we're not in a good place, state of mind, if we're not in a good place, we're not going to make all these good decisions that lead to the outcomes we want. So it's kind of taking a happiness first approach. And, um, you know, a lot of that I've done through mindfulness and connection to nature, watching sunrise, sunsets, and I, I'm not backtracking on any of that. I'm double downing, doubling down on that. But um, I, I'm just kind of now learning about like how to actually 
scientifically, you know, val it, 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 there's been some randomized controlled trials um, to back this up. And these are easy steps you can take to improve your mental health through nutrition and through, and like we can point to the nutrients that do it. Um, so really it's all seafood outside of the liver and organ meats. It's all seafood that's going to improve your antidepressant score. If you want to look at that as like, how's your antidepressant score? How's your intake? Um, salmon did make the list. So cool. Cause that's been my thing. Um, I've got a nice um, selection of wild caught frozen salmons here in the store that I work in that I can access. And for me, that's really easy because I think ease of preparation is, is super important as well. So I throw that uh, salmon filet in the oven for about 18 minutes. Um, and in the meantime, I prepare the rest of my plate with the super greens salad and top it off with whatever I'm going to top it off with. Looking now, looking at this list, uh, I'm going to be doing some green peppers, some walnuts, and some oysters. Find a way to make that work, I guess, flavor-wise. Um, extra virgin olive oil. Um, strawberries did make the list, actually. So strawberries, could look into that. Maybe a little bit of goat cheese. Now we're talking strawberries, almonds, goat cheese. You know, I don't know make it work we'll make the flavors work i'm weird i don't really care that much like if if a, a dish is perfectly flavor profiled but I, I know that's important to a lot of people um broccoli's on there cruciferous vegetables is really important um so anyway yeah just kind of kind of just going through this with you guys throwing this out there um there was one other point i really want to make okay so here's the point. Um, when you look at this, if you look at this paper, if you look at this list, consider that even though the some of the vegetable selections or um, food things actually get a higher score than the animals, consider two things. A, you would have to eat a crap ton of those vegetables because again, they're all based on 100 grams. Um, and all those nutrients are not available in just the plants or in just the animals, right? So, uh, for instance, you're pretty much only going to get those critical omega-3 fatty acids from seafood. Uh, chlorella is, um, I guess like a, a vegetarian option. It's like a plant seafood, a plant algae. What is chlorella? Uh, but it's a green thing. It's the it's uh, maybe it's an algae. Um, we sell it here in the store. What I do know about chlorella, it's the highest um, percentage of chlorophyll of all green things. Um, it's like forty percent protein, and it's a complete protein, and it has omega threes. Uh, EPA and DHA. So that's a pretty like powerful, I guess, kind of superfood, uh, chlorella. And I, I know it grows in the ocean. Um, I've been given warnings, like a lot of it comes from Japan and some of the skeptics are like, well, what about Fukushima and all that? But I don't know. I mean, I don't personally eat a ton of chlorella. The reason I learned about chlorella recently is because we've had the TikTok chlorophyll zombies coming into the store just like give me the liquid chlorophyll and they watch some tiktok video and they think it's going to help their skin it probably will i don't hate them for wanting chlorophyll uh, but i've been trying to educate them about some of the alternatives and i came ac across chlorella i'm like hey this has a crap ton of chlorophyll more than any other green thing um, and it also has protein and omega-3 fatty acids and since you are well, I'm just going to say it's your 17 year old girl concerned about your skin right now. My guess is I'm assuming y'all can hate me for this. You're probably not getting enough protein and omega threes. So maybe look at chlorophyll, but they don't, nobody, they don't care. They just want the, they want to be like what they saw in the video and they want to drink their liquid chlorophyll. I would really love to know how many of them actually take it home and just 
like realize that it doesn't taste all that good and anyway um <laughs> but yeah like iron so um omega-3 fats b12 and the heme iron are only found in animal foods seafood meat eggs dairy okay they're generally absent from plants okay and so this is why you see vegans or you hear it anecdotally it's like they're doing really well with their health this that, and the other and then they have like suffer from anxiety anxiety disorder and all of a sudden they add meat back in their diet and their anxiety goes away and it's like well you, maybe you were just nutrient deficient b12 um so we want to eat balanced okay it's a big thing i always talk about balance and i've been describing what the plate should look like i've been taking photos of what the plate can look like i'm trying to emphasize how easy it can be to put this plate together um and yeah i just think it's really cool that's really it some of the other things is like you know one of the big points she made was the things that are the our organs aren't just all compartmentalized they're not all in a vacuum and in isolation it's like if it's good for your brain health it's probably good for your cardiovascular health good for your gut health so it's comprehensive and these are and the, and they're comprehensive and they're consistent and they will um you know synthesize well with fat loss goals with muscle gain goals with performance goals you can do this i mean what basically we're talking about aversion everything's always a version of paleo whether it's autoimmune paleo or walls protocol or carnivore there's always some version of paleo this is the version of paleo that's essentially saying th these are really high in the 12 nutrients that do the most for your mental health and i think that's cool um, and I think that's worth considering at the very least having a couple meals a week that are high in these nutrients. And then you could take the rest of, you know, your week of eating to consider hitting those other areas, whether you need more protein, whether you need more carbs, fats, how, what, whatever way you want to approach it, you know, we can figure that out together. But, you know, getting your micronutrients is never the first step. You know, I talk about the first thing to do is just kind of look at quality in general, just eating real foods, then kind of just take a look at where your calories are at, then look at your macros. Pro getting enough protein on a weight loss journey is going to be huge. Then really micromanaging your micronutrients. But here's the thing, when you address quality, you are addressing the rest of the things, micronutrients, you're even addressing supplements because supplements only dictate kind of the gaps in your diet. And so the, one of the reasons as a coach, you know, we put addressing micronutrients higher up is because it's generally been more tedious. But I, I guess maybe that's the summary, um, if you're still watching, is that something like this, where we have a food score and a food scale, it's very clear which food things are going to get us a really high rating, at least in this one category of fitness, which is mental fitness. And I think that's awesome. So bottom line, eat more green things, eat more oysters and fish, um, eat some strawberries, all berries, and olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil continues, you know, to get a really good score from experts so at this point i'm not arguing it because honestly it tastes great so why why not why not just go with it i like it um all right cool yeah thank you for uh listening to my my ranting this morning and uh you know maybe someday i'll have my life together to the point where i can put these together in a uh, more concise Synth synth ugh, synthesized presentation for you all but right now i'm just trying to get this out to you god bless you all have a wonderful day and may the gains be with you peace